Hello, hello YouTube, it's me again, and uh, I'm just going to talk about some aircraft that will probably end up in the game soon, since, you know, we got this nice exciting patch that's bringing the F-15, the Su-27, and the Jazz 39 Gripen. I thought, eh, you know, what else could come later on, you know, sometime next year, probably next year. And I already made a prediction video, you know, right about all of it was wrong. <laughs> I did not think, I honestly did not think the Su-27 and F-15 were coming yet. I thought it was just going to be, they were just going to slowly progress. I didn't realize they were just going to jump the gun right into it. But hey, it's always nice to see that. I mean, it's, all three of those aircraft are some aircraft that people really wanted for a while. So, you know, it's kind of nice to see. But, you know, I could, sometime next year, I could see all the aircraft that I talked about in my last video. You know, the ABA b Plus, the F-111F, the F-4F Ice, Su-24M, the MiG-25 PD, the 111C, the Sea Harrier F-A-2, the F-2A Kai, the Mirage 2000-5EI, the entire Hungarian subtree, the Mirage 2000 DRMV, the, and the Josh 39C, which is already confirmed anyways as well as the F-16I Sufa. I can see them slowly seeping in sometime throughout the next couple of patches next year. All because it's like... These are just some aircraft that, like, how can Gaij and miss them in the first place? They're all right there, and they're also aircraft that a bunch of people have been wanting. Like, a lot of people have been wanting the F-2 Kai, but, you know, the F-15's coming out, and the F-16AJ was their top dog for a little while, so... Why get another F-16 whenever the F-15 is a lot more exciting? So, you know, they're going to let it die down a little bit and then add the F-2 and all is good. But I was just going to talk about some other stuff. Since there's no AMRAMs this patch, that'll most likely be next patch. And, you know, kind of pissed a lot of people off that the F-15 didn't come with AMRAMs. And for some reason it came with ground ordnance, even though I really can't find anything saying that any... Standard Eagles that carried ground ordnance rather than the Japanese J. Um, I mean, we all know by now that the Japanese F-15J is an F is a, an F-15C. So of course I'm going to talk about some of those today. Um, I don't pl I don't want to make this video talking about like yeah let's change the F-15A to get fucking AMRAMs and shit. But like I, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to talk about new aircraft. And uh, let's just jump the gun and get started. We're obviously going to go via nation order. The Americans first, as they are in the game. The F-14D Super Tomcat. I know it's another Tomcat. Nobody really wants one. But it could add some stuff. It's identical flight performance and model to the F-14B, so really nothing new. Uh, and really the only changes would be just AIM-9Ms and AIM-120As. And yes, it could only carry two AIM-120As on the outer AIM-7 and AIM-54 pylons during the tests. Um, of course, the AIM-120A and B are pretty much very similar missiles. Uh, and it, that they are 35G pulling and active radar homing. So it, we've all played active radar homing, assuming you've played the Tomcat before. But these are just a lot more nimble and, you know, the, they're... As the M54 was for targeting bombers, this is for targeting fighters and all this, so this should be a good time. Really, I don't see a reason why they should add it after the F-14B. At that point, make it 12-0 and keep it with the F-14B in a folder. Um, I mean, yeah, it's bringing AMRAMs, but only two of them, so, like, it's nothing really... It's nothing insane. Now, of course, the F-18C... Um, this would come for America and Sweden because Finland uh, had some Hornets and they're pretty much going to be identical to be honest with you. Uh, of course the APG-65 radar is seen on the Italian AVAB Plus, that's why you see F-18 on your RWR. That's because that's the radar the Hornet is locked into the RWRs for all of NATO in. Of course, the F-404 engines carrying two of them. You can also find those engines under a different name on the Jazz 39 Gripen. Uh, good thrust to weight, you know, very snappy maneuverability. The F-18, I've seen them plenty of times in real life. They're great, so it's it's a good, it's a very good plane. And of course, Mach 1.8 is your max speed. Gaijin, you know, they don't they don't like to keep Mach 1 planes, so. This thing will probably be reaching like Mach 2.2 or some bullshit at high altitude. 
But of course, by now, armaments wise, the Vulcan's a standard for every American jet, and pretty much most NATO jets, to be honest. Got nine total hard points. Of course, I'm not going to go over the ground ordnance and shit because I don't really care about that. Even though I've been playing it a lot more and I really like, I, I really do enjoy the gameplay of going for anti ground. It's just when I'm talking about aircraft and as most people do, they're talking about all the new missiles and what have you that are going to come to the game. Of course, you can carry two wingtip sidewinders, those being L's and M's. You can carry up to eight. AIM-9Ls, AIM-9Ms, or AIM-120Bs if you double rack them, which I don't know if Gadsden will do that. Because eight AIM-120s, as being very early on, I don't know if they'll do that. But if they do, of course, double rack. You could also single rack it and have half the carrying capacity at better flight performance. You could also carry two AIM-7 Sparrows, but who the fuck would want to do that? Like, come on, AIM-7s whenever AIM-120s are already in the game. But back to the double racking thing, once again, yeah, it it's possible they'll add it. I hope they do, because it'd be amazing to see Hornets with, you know, 10 air-to-air -air missiles locked onto it, but there's also a bunch of ground ordnance and guided weapons that I won't get into. You can probably already imagine by now, it'd probably be damn near the same thing as the F-16. And the same ordnance would go to the finished one too, all carried. I mean, all the shit that I listed off is pretty much just NATO standard weaponry, so I mean, you can find it on damn near everything. But I don't know why, as soon as I started recording, my throat decided to fucking dry up, so I'm, you know, I'm getting a little bothered here. But yeah, this could be rank 8, 12.7 to BR cap after the F-14B, and of course after the MiG-29 BIS for Finland. And on to the F-15C Eagle. Just like that, identical flight performance to the F-15J. That's because the F-15J is a C. Of course, four AIM-9Ls and AIM-9Ms for the American one. Carry four AIM-7Ms. You can carry up to eight AIM-120Bs on this, but like the like the Hornet, I don't see that coming. It'll probably be they'll probably do it. You know, four AIM-120Bs on the AIM-7 hardpoints, and this will be 12.7 after the F-15A. I'm fucking. I I don't know how to. I don't, like I don't do the dev server bullshit every time I try it. Like doesn't work so I don't get to fly any of this shit until the patch comes out and I'm hella excited for that so this will be nice but of course <coughs> oh god dude I need a I need a fucking drink hold on a second alright uh, whatever that was all about but for Russia I don't really think the R-77s are coming I, I don't know it's just a weird gut feeling odds are that they probably will come out but as for now I mean, all these aircraft that I'm listing are the R-77 could also come on. But as of right now, the, R the R-27EA and the EM, which are active radar homing variants of the R-27, might end up coming as Russia's initial Fox 3 missile. Mainly because the, R or the R-27Es are very good missiles. I mean, if you haven't played the R-27 ET or ER, you'll know they're, they're, they're fucking insane. So, like... An active radar homing version of that would also be very good. I mean, at the same time, all the EA is is just an R-27 or the R-27E with an R-77 seeker in it. Worse missile, you know, worse missile than the R-77, but of course, it bridges the gap right between the R-27ER and the R-77. I mean, because it's it's quite literally a Franken missile of both of them. You get both the shit. And um, I don't know if we'll see any more C-27s coming, because Gaijin seems to want to advance very quickly. I mean, I thought we were going to nice, go relax, finish up some nice early 4th gen fighters, but here they are just fucking going right into C-27s and F-15s. And of course, the first one, either the Su-27PU or the Su-30. Of course, Mach 2 max speed, very maneuverable fighter with the Goose 30 Dash 1 cannon. Of course, this is also seeming to be a norm. It's kind of like the Vulcan for America. They're strapping that bitch onto everything. 12 pylons total. You can carry up to 4 to 6 R-73s, up to 4 to 6 R-27 RSTs, ERs, ETs, and EAs. You can carry a lot of ground ordnance, ranging from rockets, bombs, CAB 500s, CAB 1500s, which are bombs we don't have in the game yet, KH-29 missiles, all that good stuff. Be a solid 12.7 after the Su-27S. Taking another drink there, give me a second. 
the next one, the MiG-33, aka the MiG-29 and 2, uh, the MiG-29 Project 9-15. It's, you know, performance, flight, flight performance wise, you're going to be just, you're not going to be great. You'll be in between the MiG-29A that we already have in the tech tree and the MiG-29S and T that we already have in the tech tree, obviously. Got a max speed of Mach 2.2, of course, Gaijin, you know, they'll do their horse shit with that. You can carry up to eight underwing pylons, six R73s, or four R27Rs, Ts, ERs, ETs, and EAs. I know four of them this time, so this will be a good one. It's called the Super Fulcrum for a reason. No, it's not the MiG-35 Super Fulcrum. But, you know, hey, we're getting there slowly, so we'll get there eventually. And I kind of, I'd like to see this one added, because, I mean, yeah, I want a fucking C-27 too, but... I also want a nice upgraded MiG-29 because I love the MiG-29. I fly it a lot. I have three of them already, and I intend on getting a fourth one soon, so this will be nice. Of course, you can carry CAV 500s alongside the MiG-29 SMT and four KH-29s, which the MiG-29 SMT does not get. And unless it does, then that must have been added after I played it. This one would be a solid 12.7 out of the SMT. It's very good performance. I mean, yeah, it's a MiG-29. Not interesting. That's like adding another F or F-16 for America. Yeah, it'd be nice, but like, I don't really care anymore about that. I want new shit. Of course, the MiG-29K. Yeah, I know, another MiG-29. It's just what we wanted. This one is the 9-41, and if you don't know what the MiG-29K is, it's the naval MiG-29. This is probably going to come. I don't know if the MiG-33 is going to come, but the 29K is definitely going to come. And if not... I don't know what the hell guys is doing over there. Uh, identical flight performance to the 29M2. That's all it is, just the 29M2 with just a little bit changed our ordinance for uh, for naval use and, of course, uh, carrier landing capability. Or, if you're Russia, heavy aircraft carrying cruisers. Um, you can carry up to eight R-73s. If that's not the only ordinance it can add, uh, the only other ordinance for air-to-air missile-wise would be R-77s. That's only if they add them. If not, I could really see this not being any higher than 12-0, but just carrying a bunch of R-73s. I mean, that'd be a solid missile slinger, but, you know, kind of want my mid-to-long-range engagement weapons like the R-27s as well. This could, this thing could be a solid 12-3 after the Act 141, and if they give it the R-77s, 12-7, same thing, all, all good. Of course, uh, the only reason that I split this flanker up from the next one, the C-33, is because it's a naval flanker and I wanted to get the MiG-29K out of the way before I talked about this one. This is a naval flanker. It's identical. It's, it's almost identical flight performance-wise to the C-30 I talked about earlier, which is just a better performing C-27S that we have in the game. This thing can carry up to four R-73s, well, four to six. Uh, you can carry up to eight R27Rs, Ts, ERs, and ETs. No EAs. Uh, this one never carried those. You, no real guided ordnance for close air support. Mostly dumb bombs and retarded bombs. Ooh. Which is not really what I want to use, but hey, I'd rather use guided ordnance these days. But, I mean, it's a naval flanker. What, what more are you asking for? It's not going to be a fucking... 900,000 pounds of ground ordnance carrying beast that can launch off a heavy missile armed carrier cruiser bullshit thing that Russia has it labeled as. This thing, solid 12.7 after the MiG-29K and the Yak-141 line though. You know, off to the Brits, the CF-18 Hornet, nearly identical flight performance to the American and the Finnish FA-18C that I talked about. This is of course a Canadian Hornet. You got eight pylons total, two wingtip sidewinders and six wing sidewinders. You carry up to eight A9Ls and M's, of course, just like the thing that I talked about earlier. Carry up to two A7Ms. Don't know why you do that again, but fuck, people would do it probably. And you can carry up to four A120Bs. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing whenever it comes to ground ordnance wise, uh, Mavericks and all that shit. Uh, this thing would be a solid 12.7. I mean, honestly, 12.7, 12.3 could go either way, to be honest. It'd be after, I don't know if they'd put it after the F4K. Which, if you don't know, it's the FG-1. It's either that or the Harrier GR-7. This is a very interesting one, because it's not like Canada has a carrier, so they kind of use this as like a standard Air Force fighter jet. So I don't know how they'd add this into the game, if they'd add it into the naval line, or if they'd just add it into like the multi-role line, like the Harrier. 
you know, the only time will tell because I have a feeling this is probably going to come because, I mean, Britain doesn't really have too much that they can get for right now until, like, the Eurofighter comes out, which I'm obviously not going to talk about that today because I'm talking about 4th Gen fighters, not 4.5 Gens or anything that's, like, advanced and whatnot. Even though you might think the Su-30 and the Su-33 are 4.5 Gen fighters, I mean, real-life flight performance and shit will tell you otherwise. So, I mean, that, that goes for the Su-57 being a 5th Gen that performs like a 4th Gen, so who cares? Uh, off to the Chinese. Um... The J-11's come in this patch, so obviously we all know the J-11A or J-11B. Uh, the B's more advanced, carries more modern weaponry, so obviously that's not going to come now. But the J-11A would be a nice solid step up from the current J-11, which as of right now is just a copy-paste uh, Su-27S, which is basically a Su-27SK that was exported to China. You know, you still keep the R-27, R, T, E, R, and ETs, as well as the R-73s, but you can carry some Chinese home ordnance, which is great. You can carry some PL-8s, you can carry up to six of those, or you can carry four PL-12s, which are very close in performance whenever it comes to that, of the AIM-120B AMRAAM, so 35G pull, active radar homing missile with very snappy maneuverability as well. Not really off the rail, but, you know, these are early... These are early active radar homing missiles they're not like an AIM-120C just pulling a 90 degree right off the rail like they do in real life they're gonna they're gonna take a little while they're gonna be like an AIM-7 and of course identical ground ordnance to the previous J-11 there was nothing new added to this one that's the newer J-11s that get some nice new ground ordnance this thing would be a great 12-7 after the J-11 that we currently have my throat's still scratchy and fucking dry I don't know as soon as I record, shit happens to me, I guess. Um, the J-15 flanker, obviously a new one. Uh, identical performance-wise to the J-11A. This is just a J-11 that China decided to redesignate, put some different ordnance on, and throw on a carrier. Um, you've got very little ground ordnance, so it's not like you're carrying a bunch of guided bombs. You can carry up to 8 PL-8s or 4 PL-12s. Um, once again, the flankers are all just missile trucks on super maneuverable platforms, so that's kind of how they go. It's a naval version of the J-11, like I said, and it'd be a solid 12-0 folded. I'd probably say folded with the J-11A because there's no real naval line to throw it in, so like, kind of just added as a half-priced, less ground ordnance missile slinging beast with the J-11A. I mean, they could do the J-11A or they could add it in with the the J-11 that's coming to the game now. Um, of course, the last one being the F-15C Boz. This thing, I'm not going to spend that much time talking about it. It's just, it's the same thing to the American one. This one just gets Python 3s. Of course, same thing. I mean, it could get Derby missiles, which are like Python missiles that are active radar homing. I don't really see that happening, to be honest with you, but like, it could happen. And, um, you know, once again, solid 12.7 after the F-15A. Um, yeah, just, if I forgot anything, just let me know. I, I could make another video. I could start making videos on 4.5 Gen fighters coming to the game. You know, throwing in some Super Hornets, Strike Eagles, and Typhoons and shit. But, like, as of right now, I didn't really see much of anything that could come for France. I mean, they already got the Mirage 4000. The Rafale's not even a 4th Gen fighter. It's a 4.5, so... I don't see that coming, unless they bring, like, an early version of it. Uh, I don't really see that. I'm just, I'm just going off of some shit that it's, it's, it's too good not to come very soon anyways. It's, it's, it's kind of how that works. I mean, I could talk about some more, like, grip invariants for Sweden, but, like, we already know the C's coming. They already said it, they already said it on the dev stream. And we already know the British are getting the South African... Jazz 39, which let me look real quick. What kind of ordinance did the Jazz 39 for South Africa uh, carry? Didn't it get like eight darter missiles? Uh, yeah, eight darters. I don't really. It, it just kind of seems to me like a a very okay. That's that looks to me like a it would perform similar to a R73. I could be wrong. I mean, I really could be wrong. But I'm just saying, I don't know if they're... I don't even know if they're going to add that. Honestly, they're probably going to, like, go the cheap route and 
rather than developing new missiles and shit, they'll probably just fucking slap AIM-9Ms on it. They'll, they'll do what they did to Sweden. They'll put, like, they'll bring some bullshit straight out of their ass, and they'll just be like, here, you want an RB-74M? Like, gadget, what the fuck y'all on? It's, Sweden never had the AIM-9M, for those of you who don't know. So, like, going a little ahistorical here, but hey, nothing that the F-16AJ can't solve here, so... Yeah, um, just let me know if you want to see anything else, you want me to talk about anything else, throw it down in the comments. Obviously, I'll be there, and I'll probably make a video on it. I plan on recording a lot more, and, you know, I was going to get back to whatever I was... I don't even know what my next video plan was, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't really... Oh, uh, it was the South African air tree that I was supposed to make a video on. I mean, I don't feel like the South African air tree's coming anyways, but, like, I feel like they're just going to give them a grip and just to shut them up. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about some other shit if you want me to. Um, just throw it down in the comments, obviously. And I will be there. So yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. Ciao.